This is a little film showing the latest changes I've made to the Orwell computer. Basically, look under here. I have added a a I/O daughter board. Uh, that's that lower board there, which is sort of mounted to the chassis. It's a bit hard to see with everything connected up, but um, basically that board contains two more 6522 via chips and uh, a couple of analog to digital converters. So I'm using one of the vias to build a joystick port so I can plug in a small analog joystick and handle a couple of buttons and the other port is just general purpose I.O. so there's 16 bits arranged in two 8-bit ports that can be set up as inputs or outputs however you want. Um, I've made a few other smaller changes. Uh, the default font size is now uh, 40 characters wide instead of 80 mainly because it looks better on these little tiny car LCD screens. Uh, if you go to 80 characters the display gets a bit fuzzy. If, if you're using a proper TV the display works fine. So because I'll usually be using these tiny screens and it's a bit more in keeping with an 80s computer the 40 columns works really well. Uh, to demonstrate all this working basically what I've got is I don't have a joystick yet, I've only got a single pot wired up and a single button. Uh, everything's just patched through at the moment, but eventually I'll wire everything to proper D-type connectors. Uh, DB9 for the Joy port and a DB25 for the I.O. ports. But for now, I've just written a, um, a little program that shows how the, how the um, joystick will work. codes there. Uh, if we run it, basically all this is doing is reading the the pot down here and I can output the value on the, the debug LEDs. Um, now there is one little trick to this. Uh, basically what I'm doing is is running the A to D's in, a, in what's called a free running mode and they're connected directly to the via ports so it just outputs um, the eight analog to digital converter just outputs eight bits straight into port A and port B on one of the vias, and then within my code I just have to peek at that vias memory location for its ports, and I can just read the value directly. Um, I did it that way because it's a lot easier than trying to actually drive the ADCs from the assembly language code. So, because this machine is actually running BASIC all the time, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. The other trick is how I've done the joystick buttons. If you look really closely at the, the LEDs, you can see that the, the least significant bit, the, the red one on the far right, isn't actually changing. Um, to be able to handle the buttons, I didn't have enough general purpose I.O. ports. I didn't want to pinch any from the, the second vial because I want to keep that separate. So what I've done is I basically dropped the least significant bit um, that's being output from the, the analog to digital converters and I used that bit to monitor the buttons. Um, what this means is you, you still get a full range on the pot but you've sort of lost some accuracy because you're, you're not getting that, that lowest bit. This doesn't really actually seem to matter because what I've found is there's so much jitter on the signal quite often. Um, you can see, see it sort of jittering around there. Um, that lowest bit would always be changing anyway, so by dropping it out, I'm not actually losing anything. Um, so what I do is I, I've actually wired the, the buttons to that bit. So, in effect, this means when you read the value of the port, you'll either get an, an even number or an odd number, depending on whether or not the button's pushed. And you can check for that in the side the basic code quite simply by doing an AND with one, and then checking the result. Um, so that's basically the shortcut I've taken to, to run the buttons. So this little code, all it's really doing is it's reading the pot values, and then when you push the button, the value changes, and, you, and you'll see this last LED go off 
and it should just draw a circle on the screen with a radius based on the pot setting. That's what it does. So this was just a little test program to prove that it um, that it actually works. Uh, so the next step will be basically calling the hardware done. Uh, I don't really want to add any more I.O. to it or any more ports or anything. I should have enough there now to be a fairly good you know, 80s style general computer. So the next step will be building a casing for it all. And I've got a few ideas for that, but I haven't actually started doing that yet. Um, so that's about it for now.